Thank you. All right. The court is calling 2022 CR 3264 state of Texas versus Matthew Salazar. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state <laughs> defense? Uh, Cornelius Callum. And are you Mr. Salazar? Yes, ma'am. And probation, this is for regular probation. Yes, ma'am. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case and that you review it with your client? Uh, yes, Mr. Salazar, I'm going to show you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with assault of a pregnant person? That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court doesn't have to follow it. If for any reason the court does not follow it and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you. And you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at 10 years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine. State recommends community supervision. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of 10 years. There be a TAP evaluation, 200 hours community service restitution, no contact with Amanda Bondock, B-O-N-D-O-C, and the B-I-P-P course. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offense is charged. How do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest, ma'am. State any evidence? Yes, Judge, we offer what's required to state on No objection. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are we proceeding with sentencing? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. On the, uh, the no contact with the plaintiff, uh, my uh, the sound of the law was supposed that the court would uh, consider no harmful or injurious contact and be called. They have, they have children together. And uh, the, the, the complaint is uh, actually in the case says uh, didn't want to actually pursue it. And uh, we're, we're just hoping that, that the court will consider the no harm for no harm contact. There no contact there. All right. Um, State, have you had contact with the complainant? We have. And does she want a no harm for injurious contact? She has not clarified on that specifically um, whether she wants the no harmful or just no contact, but based off of these pieces, um, I believe she would want a no contact order. I can't say that for sure. Um, It's an interesting situation. And Mr. Cox, I want you to know, I I recognize you as an officer of the court, and I do know you as I know the state. So uh, what you're telling me, I do take it as truth. But I always like to know whether or not the state has had contact with the complainant and is the complainant is aware of the plea and those type of things. So is she aware of this plea? She's aware of the terms of the plea, um, the term being the 10 years probation. but again, specifically, I'm not sure if they've discussed the no harmful or injurious content. Okay. Is there anything you wish to say, Mrs. Salazar? No, ma'am. Just, uh, we have kids together. And... All right. Kids are Billy goats, baby goats. Those yeah, are our yeah. kids. We yeah. have children. I'm just trying to finish my college. Just so, so, I... so here's my question. Um, are you employed? Yes, ma'am. What do you do? I'm working at mobile home installers right now, but... I might go back to doing electrical work. All right. I'm going to tell you, here's my issue with the no contact versus no harm for injurious contact. What I have before me is from reading everything, you assaulted her while she was pregnant. So 
for me, that should be no contact. Now, if maybe once you've completed or started the BIP course and I um, speak to her, uh, then maybe I'll reconsider. But for now, the answer is no. And when I read the police report, there appears to be some altercation and then you went off with the child and then came back with the child. And that's a lot of confusion, chaos, and violence to be happening in front of young children. And how old was this child? She was about six months. So, so the oldest child was six months. So the child who was around when this happened was six months old. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, no, she's, she said she was pregnant, but she had already had a No, no, no. So she's saying she was pregnant. You're charged with assault on a pregnant person. You're saying that there are two children or no, just no, one? No. Just only one. Yeah. All right. Well, here's the thing. Uh, we're going to start out with no contact. You know, when people come before me and they want to have contact because they have children, it's like the time of think to think about that is before we get to this point. So show me something. Take some anger management classes. Get your life in order. Get your household in order. Then the court would consider, you know, you being allowed to contact. Uh, do you have family support? Yes, ma'am. Who do you have in your life supporting you? Uh, my grandma, grandpa, my dad. All right. And does she have family supporting her? She does. She has with me. Well, no. I mean, people have more than just you. Does she have a mom, a dad, an aunt, a brother, a cousin, a sister? No, her, her, her father um, committed suicide in front of her. So. All right. So then this is what's going to ha end up happening. If there's, um, you know, for you to see the child or something like that, you all have to make arrangements oh. through a third party. You can't contact her. Oh. Yeah, because it's, I, I want to make sure that the issues and the confusion that brought us here yes, don't occur again. Yes, and what I can tell you is when people say they love each other, problems are not solved with violence. When it gets to the point where people want to be violent with each other, Maybe it's a relationship that people should walk away from. And if there's children involved, then you walk away and you say, you know what? I will always love you. We will always be friends because you're the mother of my child or you're the father of my child. But you and me, as far as a intimate or romantic relationship, not going to happen. But what I'm telling you is you cannot have contact with her. If I find out you have contact with her, you're going to be looking at 10 years in the prison. You understand? If she comes over to your house, and as Mr. Cox showed the court before of her climbing through your window, you had better call the police and say, hey, I'm on probation. I'm under a no contact order. And this complainant is coming through my house through the window. Yes, so the court is going to, uh, as previously stated, finding you, find you guilty, sentence you to 10 years in prison, suspended and probated for 10 years. There's a $1,500 fine. That'll be probated. The BIPP course, 200 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of the COVID vaccination with booster. Court is not requiring it, but if you do, then 40 of those hours will be waived. Okay. I'm going to ask for parenting classes with Triple T. If you uh, complete. Some... All right. Just, well, we'll see. I just recently completed it now. So From who? Approved? Shows when did you complete this certificate? Like when? Um, maybe a month and a half ago while I was doing my college, I did it for CPS. All right, so child protective services is involved in this as well. Okay, is child protective services still involved? Um, they we had court the other day, I think that's to be the end of it. All right, CPS compliance, if applicable, just provide the um parenting classes certificate to probation. So, probation. Is he if he has parenting classes certificate where he successfully completed it from CPS, then the court will accept that. Yes, uh, we're going to do CPS compliance if applicable. There's to be no contact with Amanda Bondock until further notice. The BIPP course and Mr. Cox, you can check and see if they did um, the BIPP course as a part of CPS. I'm not sure. Uh, there's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. 
I'm going to want random field visits uh, two times per month. And you can do those for six months to see how they are. are. And then uh, if they're fine, you can slowly start tapering downward with the, the field visits. And the field visits, if you want to, can count as his um, appointment. Are there any drug issues with you? No, no, no. I have heart problems. I'm sorry, what? I have heart problems and conditions. I don't. Oh, okay. All right. We're not represented someone before who had heart problems, but I was still representing him for possession. <laughs> All right. So, maybe, maybe allegedly. Yeah. Oh, no, I went to, uh, well, I mean, there was a representation, but I did allegedly. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Allegedly. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's to be regular UAs, uh, proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Probation, is there anything else he needs? Uh, is there anything else that you need from me in order to be successful? Mm. Not at the moment, ma'am. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification. Oh, just one moment. Excuse me. Shouldn't this be an affirmative uh, finding of family violence? Yes, Judge. All right. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. All right. Before I close the record or go to the trial court certification, I want to explain to you what an affirmative finding of family violence designation means. And then if you decide that you no longer want to do the plea based upon that, let me know and I'll allow you to withdraw your plea. So with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. Do you understand? No, and with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You want to talk to your attorney about that? Or do you understand? Oh, well, that's fine. All right, so knowing those things, do you still wish to go forward with this plea? Yes, ma'am. All right, so there's an affirmative finding of family violence. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? All right, we can go off the record. So what are these names on your uh, tattoos about? Oh, my, my, my son, Matthew the second, my daughter, Annabelle, well, my wife, which is, you know, Amanda. And then I just have blessed right here. I just have my kids' names, and then I have my other daughter's name right here. Zoe. So how many children do you have? Well, I have four. What are their ages? Well, I got a 14-year-old, which I haven't seen in a while, and then I got a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old, and then I got a 2-year-old. All right, so here's the thing. You have a felony conviction. It's not the end of the world because for you, because one, you're not going to prison, right? Yes, ma'am. You're going to have to start making better choices or you may end up in prison. Yes, you Hopefully, you want to be the type of father that your children look up to you. Yes, I want to be there for my, my, my kids. Like I, I don't want them to grow up the way I did. So, that means you're going to have to change your ways. Yes, you understand? Yes, All right. I'm giving you a chance on probation. The key to being successful in probation in this court is being open, honest, and communicating. Yes, you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I appreciate it. All right, you're welcome. Court is calling 2022 CR 3264, State of Texas versus Matthew Salazar. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. Public reporter. Are you Mr. Salazar? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision and first amendment motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorneys? Did yes. you, I'm sorry, with your attorney, did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Matthew Salazar who was placed on community supervision in 2022, CR 3264, for the offense of assault of a pregnant person on December 8, 2022, for a term of 10 years? Is that you? You need to speak up. Yes, ma'am. All right, state? Yes, Your Honor, as we proceeded um, on the first. Uh, violation under Chapter 22. We're waiving the mandate. All right. So, which violation? The the first paragraph. Yes. 
if y'all want to read that into the record. Mm -hmm. Can I need a stamp, please, for a motion to revoke? Violated condition number two. On or about the 13th day of February 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The Everyone, you all need to whisper. We're on the record. The defendant, Matthew Salazar, did then and there illegally use a controlled substance, namely methamphetamine, in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Sure. Any objections to the state's waivers? No, you don't. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000, I'm sorry, and up to a $1,500 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Yes, ma'am. The court would find violation of condition number two true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Judge. And what are you all requesting? And I was requesting that um, that he have to participate in uh, in the tax evaluation. It's my understanding one hasn't been done up to this point. Um, that he be referred for intensive outpatient um, treatment. That he have to um, call into the UA hotline, and then that a felony drug court referral be issued. Um, and then we're hoping, obviously. It's been a little bit since this previous violation. We're hoping if he's given an opportunity out in the community, that if he can make these appointments and show that he's willing to participate forward, move forward in his probation and actually start um, taking accountability, that that'll get him on the right track. Um, we'd also ask that if uh, if any of these appointments moving forward don't happen, that indicates that he's not moving forward with his probation, that we'd uh, issue an NPR at a later date. All right, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Matthew Salazar. All right, so what's going on in your life? Why have you been using? Well, to be honest, back at that point, back then, I just depressed. I lost everything. I lost my family. Okay, you're going to have to. I like lost everything. I was just depressed. You know I mean, somehow, somewhere along the line, I messed up and you know, I know consequences for my actions. And right now, I'm at a better point in my life. I have a, some kind of human structure behind me. I have something to look. Have, Open your mouth. Oh, I have some, I have a better point in my life right now. And I have some sort of structure behind me now to help me out. And you know, something to look forward to. And What's I, your structure that you have behind you now? Well, now I have my dad, he's back from, you know what I mean? He was uh, overseas, he's back now and then, you know what I mean? Okay, so here's the thing. I know maybe you're nervous, but you're going to have to open your mouth yes, to speak and stop mumbling yes, because when you do that, guess what? I can't hear. Court reporter yes, can't hear. Oh, no, my dad came back from overseas, so now he's here to help me out. You know I mean? Get me on the right track. And I've been doing good. I've got a job. I'm working. You know what I mean? do you do? I'm an electrician, and I work at a corner store at night. All right, so when's the last time you used? Not, no, I mean, here's no. the thing. Oh, no, you started your sentence with to be honest, yeah. No, and your I'll attorney will tell you usually when people say, Well, to be honest, what's about the fault is not honesty. No, I was gonna tell you, not Matt, I probably used it that one or two times, but I came out dirty. But I was smoked weed like before I got arrested. Okay, I'm beating yeah. all right, and probation. Yes, sir. I didn't hear his last answer. Oh, he said he smoked weed. Okay. Judge, um, in addition to everything that the state has mentioned, I would add sober support meetings. Okay. All right. Any questions from either counsel? Not from the judge. All right. This is what the court is going to order. The court is going to order a TAP evaluation. That can be done out of custody. If you miss that top evaluation appointment and there's not a good reason for it, by good reason, I mean, hey, I'm in the hospital, a warrant's going to be issued for your arrest. Do you understand? You're going to call into the UA hotline. Here's the thing about the UA hotline. When you call it, they may say, hey, you need to come in and do a test, right? And maybe you're at a job site and you're, the job won't let you leave. So you're like, 
uh, I'm just not going to go do the UA hotline. Nope. What you need to do is you need to pick up the phone, call your probation officer and say, I'm at a job. This is when my lunch break will be today. Can I come in over my lunch break? You understand? Mm -hmm. There is going to be referral to felony drug court. And there's going to be 90 sober meetings in 90 days. And follow all TAP recommendations. Unless they're asking for inpatient treatment. We'll start with outpatient treatment if they're asking for inpatient treatment. With the referral to felony drug court, do not miss that appointment. Yes, if he's accepted into felony drug court, then of course we won't need to follow the TAP recs. But under no circumstances is that UA to be performed uh, after 24 hour time period. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Anything else, probation? No, Judge. Is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful? No, ma'am. I think I really need just help and support so I can get back on the track. All right. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. Everything that you do, you know, you're looking at 10 years in prison potentially. So you're being given the tools. So perhaps you won't use everyone. When we're on the record, don't approach the don't approach. People don't read that sign. All right. So you've been given the tools. If there's an issue and you see that you're going to use in this court, you know what you should do? Pick up the phone and call probation. Pick up the phone, call your sponsor. You should get a sponsor. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. And if you feel like probation is not addressing your issue, you can always come back to the court. You understand? Yes, ma'am. But above all things, don't just throw up your hands and say, uh, whenever they pick me up, they pick me up. Because thing, then things start piling up. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you.